Hey guys, this is Dungeon Master Kenneth, and today we're going to be talking about metamagics and how to build your sorcerer. This is going to be the first part of a three-part series on different ways that you can build your sorcerer to work better in your games and fill more roles and just a blaster. Alright, um, starting off, we're just going to start this off as like, you know, what metamagics should you take and which ones are the best, so to speak. Um, there really is no definite answer to that. It really depends mostly on what you need entirely. Um, personally, a really solid meta magic because, like, just for the stuff that you can do with it, a solid default is twin spell. Just twin for the win, man. What what I mean by twin spell, and this is a really cool thing. A lot of people think it's solely for damage. It's actually not. Uh, twin spell um, can also be used immensely for utility. Anything that affects one target can now affect two. At the cost of a sorcery point. Well, you know, per spell level, rounded up, of course. <coughs> to be eligible, however, a spell must be incapable of targeting more than one creature at the, at, at the spell's current level. Uh, for example, Magic Missile and Scorching Ray and, even, and also Eldritch Blast will not work. But, Ray of Frost and Firebolt will. Um, haste will always work. Hold Person at second level will work for Twin Spell. I don't really recommend it. But it's a good option. It really is. And, um, you know, it's just, if it can target more than one creature at its current level or base levels, I like to put it for the example of whole person, it's out. Alright. So, can you twin spell hex? Yes. That's one of the reasons a lot of people, that's one reason why sor uh, the Sorlock or Sorcerer or Warlock multi class is common for damage because of two hexes. Um, I generally don't really care about that it's kind of a weird it's really cheesy especially if you're just cheesing it with scorching ray um or twin spell firebolt or whatever have you but uh the main reason why i, I say mad magics really decide your spell is, is it can determine your role um this is just a list of my favorite meta magics and why i like them um, careful spell is a really good option, especially if you have a lot of people with evasion, because it's it's basically functioning as scald spell, all of sorcerer style. So all careful spell is, is when you cast a spell that forces other creatures to make a saving throw, like mm, hypnotic pattern, fireball, etc. You can protect some of those creatures from the spell's full force. To do so, you spend one sorcery point and choose a number of those creatures up to your charisma modifier, a minimum of one creature. And that chosen creature automatically succeeds on a saving throw against the spell. Good for hypnotic pattern. Good for a lot of like good for a lot of area controlling spells. Hypnotic pattern and slow especially. Uh, distant spell is another option here. Uh, I have to another one of my favorites. Uh, I was talking with Dave from Nerdarchy a while back about this spell. Um, when you cast a spell that has a range of five feet or greater, you can spend a sorcery point to double the range of the spell. This is really great for ranges of self, for range of self spells like lightning bolt, thunder wave, thunderclap, etc. Arms of Adar. And when you cast a spell that has a range of touch, you can spend one sorcery point to make the range of the spell thirty feet. So inflict wounds straight to your face if you're a favorite if you're a divine soul sorcerer. Um, generally, the best uh, two meta magics that most people always pick are twinned and empowered, and there's a reason for that. Mainly for empowered. Whenever you roll dam, if you're rolling, if you're rolling damage for a spell, you can spend a sorcery point to roll and to re-roll a number of those dice up to your charisma modifier, a maximum of five, minimum of one. And you have to use the new rolls. You can use empowered spell even if you've already used a different meta magic option during the casting of the spell. That's why I really love it because I love empowered careful fireball or empowered heightened fireball. Um, it's really good. Mainly empowered, careful is a, is a safe bet with AoE. Extended spell, it's good. It's really good. And this can be really good if you only have one person to buff. You can actually argue, uh, you know, maybe I don't need twinned as much. But might, I might need extended spell. Any, but put it this way. Any spell that has a duration of a minute or longer, you can spend one sorcery point to double its duration to a maximum of 24 hours. This is really good if you really want to cheese whole person because it has a minute duration. So you can cast a uh, whole person at a high level and just cast extended spell on that to where the duration lasts longer, to where you can try to get more out of that par uh, bleh, that paralysis. Sorry, I got a little tongue tied there. Um, 
in terms of damage, Quicken Spell is probably one of the uh, is another very very solid option. Very solid option on the whole. Um, aside from all that, um, it's just basically you know you can make uh, one, a spell that has a cast on an action, spending two sorcery points every time you, cha you cast it. After that point, however, and it changes its casting time to a one bonus action. So it's really good to cheese up like just really quick punches of damage to where you're always doing something. I generally recommend against this, however, in favor of flexible casting, and I'll explain why in another video in the future. Um, Subtle Spell is another one of those weird metamagics, a lot like Heightened, and I'll get to Heightened in a second. Uh, Subtle Spell is, when you cast a spell, you can spend one sorcery point to cast it without any somatic or verbal components. This is really good, especially if you're in like a silent spell, or your hands are bound, and you still want to cast a spell. Subtle spell is good in those situations. It's a really, it's a spell, another magic personally that really doesn't get a lot of play, and I really don't know why. A lot of people really don't play with subtle spell. I personally love that meta magic. Um, and now we're back to heightened. Okay, well, heightened spell is it kind of works really fun with empowered and uh, careful, especially if you're making things roll saves. Why heightened spell is really good? It's not as good as portent, but it's still really solid. Is when you cast a spell that forces a, that forces a creature to make a saving throw to resist its effect, you can ar effects. You can argue disintegrate, for an example. You can spend three sorcery points to give one target of the spell disadvantage on its first saving throw made against the spell. Okay, that's pretty good. Three sorcery points is a little costly, but this is probably one of the strongest meta magic options for you know saver suck, making your saver suck spells do a better job. Um. There's a lot of different ways to make Sorcerer work. Um, support Sorcerers are incredibly viable. You still want to use Twinned, but you're going to be more focused on utility instead of damage, but you still want good damage. A lot of people go wrong when they try to make uh, utility characters and they go focused entirely on damage instead of you know having a wonderful mix of the both. Um, one thing about Sorcerer, unless you're going Draconic, you will have to worry about Mage Armor. Here's the thing I have to say around that. As a sorcerer, you don't really need mage armor. You you really don't. Um, my general the general spells I pick up for first level, as a sorcerer, you, like the two you pick up, I always pick up shield and sleep. I'll explain sleep in a second. The reason why I pick up sleep is for at least for the first five levels, I at least have some you know control. I can at least manipulate the battlefield a little bit. It may not work at all. So how why, why sleep's an option, especially for early play is it's a decent enchantment spell. You can at least, you know, if there's a fight where you're having to fight like 10 motherfuckers, you can reliably take at least like three or four of them out of the fight. Maybe one or two, depending on their health. Um, and if they, you know, aren't elves. If they are elves, well, you know, just save your spell slot for shield and just pew pew firebolt. Um, another good option and believe it or not, Witch Bolt's actually still a viable option regardless. Yeah, it's not a good in the concentration aspect, but it's still the fact of if you're concentrating on it, you don't have to roll the hit. It's just constantly doing that damage. It's great for the first... Witch Bolt really is a solid option for the first five levels of gameplay, and especially if you're playing Storm Sorcerer, Witch Bolt actually is really viable. Um, Witch Bolt, Lightning Bolt, etc. are really viable. Witch Bolt's probably one of your stronger options for a first level spell slot. If you're Storm. But if you're not Storm, um, let's be real. For most casters, you're going to be using your first through fourth level spell slots. Unless you're flexible casting and cannibalizing your second through fourth level spell slots as a sorcerer, you're going to be saving those spell slots almost exclusively for shield. And that's the sad part of it. Like, shield is the probably the best reaction in the game in terms of, you know, reliable coverage and potentially not getting fucked. Um, again, like, the spell list for Sorcerer, it really depends. I can uh, go a little more in-depth about that later. But for the most part, you only have 15 spells to choose from, but that's all you'll ever really need. It really is. It's all you'll ever fucking need. In fact, uh, I have a PDF here somewhere I can look at. No, it's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. All right. Mm, wrong one. 
but I'll, I'll find it here in a sec. Just, you know, the really the main 15 spells that you really want to be looking at. A lot of people keep saying you got to have fireball. It's a great option. If you have fireball, it is a really fucking good option. But we're going to just, you know, think about this a little bit. All right. Sorcerer gets most of their spell lists, at least ninety, at least most of their spells from Wizard, about ninety-five percent, which is a lot. However, there is something that the Sorcerer doesn't have access to. That's the spell book. That's also a lot of really powerful options for later levels, and they also have the limitation of how many spells they can, you know, they they have known. Sorcerer has an event has a leg up on the Wizard, however. And the fact of we can reverse engineer our spell list to get the most useful spells for that time period. But we also have meta magics, and we have access to really to cannibalizing our spells to get more spells cast in that short time. Um, War Sorcerer is very much a sprinter compared to the wizard. Wizard's more your marathon runner. The wizard can last a lot longer, and it, it's just not as bombastic. It's you know generally good all the way through. Sorcerer gets real like it's the Really, the pinnacle of sorcerer gameplay starts at 15th level when you have access to so much more sorcery points and you can really choose your meta magics and flexible casting, and that just gets even better at 20th level sorcerer play. Um, generally, the best options I've always had for I've always had for sorcerer. You always want shield. You generally want mage armor, but not always. Uh, chromatic. Generally, I'll put a list of this. Get this off the top of my head. You for your first level spells, you generally always want shield and chromatic orb. Magic missile is not that good. It's okay. It really is okay, but you can't can't but you don't have it as a spell mastery, so that's a bit of a drawback. For second level, hold person is a very solid option to have all the way through. I generally recommend that specifically if you have a warlock. But if you don't have a warlock, well, or a wizard, and you're the only dedicated spellcaster, you might need to keep this as an option. Aside from that, some of your best spells to have in second level are Enhance Ability, especially if you're playing Support Sorcerer, and Mirror Image. Mirror Image is just really good all the way out, all the way through. For third level, it really depends on what you need. Generally, Fireball is a really solid pick because it gives you more damage, but I'll explain why I really don't care for Fireball in a little bit, because a lot of things are really are resistant or immune to fire. Uh, you're better, honestly, in some ways, better off with Lightning Bolt being prepared on that list, but I'll, I go more utility for that one. Um, protection from Energy is really solid. Sorcerer can learn that. Um, haste, very, very solid. And um, I generally... It really depends. That third spell and third level really depends a lot on what I need. Sometimes counter spell is good, but I really, you really aren't going to be needing to do that much as a Sorcerer. It really depends a lot on what you need to do personally. If you're, um, you know, the only spellcaster, you might need other. Uh, you might need counterspell, but you really wouldn't. Uh, I generally prefer blink. Okay, and that's given us a lot of spells. That's already seven out of our fifteen. For fourteenth level, for fourth level, it's generally always going to be dimension door. Dimension door. Greater Invisibility and Stone Skin are really solid. I actually sometimes prefer Banishment over um, uh, Stone Skin. Mainly if I don't really see myself getting hit a lot, I can argue Banishment over Stone Skin, especially if there's not a, a, not a Warlock in the party and I'm running more utility support with things like Heightened Spell or stuff like that. For 5th level, I usually always just, like, it's mainly these two spells. P teleportation Circle is optional. But Sorcerer doesn't get a lot of really good spells on that level. Uh, but Hold Monster is can, pretty much mandatory. Dominant Person, you can also argue, is mandatory as well if you really want to take advantage of enchantment spells. But generally, Hold person, hold Monster and Teleportation Circle. For 6th level, again, really depends. Global Invulnerability is pretty solid. Uh, disintegrates your best damage option in the game, really, for Sorcerer. And Chain Lightning is pretty good. You don't have access to a lot of the wizard spells on that level, so your list is a little different. For 7th level, teleport. Teleport and plane shift, really, but mainly teleport, because it's a really solid option, because you can get around shit, and you can also use this in conjunction with teleportation circle, which is pretty rad. So, pretty nice. 
Um, plane shift is a, a fun one because it's basically you can if that target fails its charisma saving throw, it's sent to a plane where it's most likely going to die. If it's not native, if it's you know not native to the material plane, plane shift's weird. Well, actually, no, that's banishment that does that. But plane shift, you can just send something off to its death, which is pretty cool. Eighth level, you don't have access to demi plane as a sorcerer, unfortunately, but there's a lot of good options. Um, generally, a solid one's always dominate monster or power word stun. Um, I really don't pick up a lot of eighth level eighth level spells as sorcerer. There's not a lot of good ones. And for ninth level, generally in terms of damage, the one you all you the one you want here is Meteor Swarm. It's really solid. Does a lot of damage. Forty dice six. I think it's 30 to 40 uh, six siders. Uh, another solid one is Wish. Most sorcerers always go for Wish. I don't personally. It always it backfires more often more often than not. Uh, time stops always generally solid as well. Sorcerer doesn't get a lot of, doesn't get a lot all the wizard options for ninth level. I believe we I believe they still get foresight, which is pretty good, but that's better off left for the diviner wizard. Generally, ninth level you can almost ignore because you're always going to be you're never really going to be using that ninth level spell slot. You're really just going to be using it to cast you know other spells higher leveled. And sorcerer, and that's just a quick rundown of spells. So like your spell list could easily change. Uh, for fourth level, there's a reason why I don't have fireball on third level, and that's because of ice storm. Ice storm is really solid. I think sorcerer can still earn cone of cold. I'm not too certain on that one personally. But if they can, in some ways, that's a little bit better to pick up over Ice Storm because it's just a huge-ass frontal cone that you can use Careful Spell to potentially, you know, negate things, especially if you're in a party that has a lot of rogues and monks, things with evasion. Um, in terms of damage, Sorcerer is very solid. That's one of the things it does better than the Wizard, to a degree. But it's also got a lot more utility options, especially through its meta magic feature. And if you go Divine Magic Sorcerer, you can ha you have a lot more supportive options as well because you can pick up Cleric Spells. So if you really want to go pure support Divine Soul, you can pick up a lot more Cleric Spells. And that's going to be giving you some utility because you can heal. It's pretty rad. You also get one additional spell as a, from the Divine Magic Sorcerer from your alignment and your affinity. So that's always a, that's another really solid option. So you get one free spell. It's pretty cool. I usually pick up, um, from the alignment affinity, it's always really good to pick up uh, Inflict Wounds, because that just gets better the higher you cast it, but at the same time, uh, Protection from Evil and Goods really solid, but Cure Wounds is really good as well. And generally, if I'm playing support, I'm, prob I'm more likely to pick up Cure Wounds over a lot of other options. Anyway, this has been Kenneth Woody signing off, and I will be coming back, coming at you with another part of this Sorcerer series. Alright, stay nerdy guys.